Today I want to talk about massage as an art form. Massage has a scientific component, but to be a really good massage therapist, you need to be a healing artist. Uh, and that's what I'm going to talk about today and therefore show why certain things like even massage regulations and things like that can sometimes be counterproductive to making good massage artists in the world that need to be there in order to help so many people with so many different health problems. So in order to understand why I believe that massage is an art form predominantly, um, please have a look at my previous video about what is life force or the importance of understanding what is chi or ki. Uh, because a lot of why I believe massage is an art form is based upon what I talked about in that lecture. Okay. So when you understand that a person is life force and then the goal of massage is to uh, manipulate or to encourage the flow of that life force through things like pressure points and reflexology and just even you know the way you touch a person you know which is what a lot of Reiki is about and um, then we can understand that one of the most important qualities in a good massage therapist is the ability to feel life energy. Just like with a martial artist, you can see sometimes, um, especially with the Shaolin Kung Fu school of martial arts, um, you know, people even like Bruce Lee, who used to follow, um, you know, mixed martial arts. Um, you can see there in a lot of those schools um, where you can have an old man of, of 80, and because he's developed um, his ability to be very strong in his life force or his chi, he can hold back many younger men with the power or the power of his chi, which in Hawaii they would call his mana or his spiritual authority or his um, yeah, potency is another way to describe it. But massage is like that in, in the sense that, you know, some of the qualities um, of being a good massage therapist are similar to being a martial artist. A good martial artist in the olden days was somebody that could definitely not just know a bunch of techniques, like, oh, I know my katas or my, you know, particular moves on how to, um, you know, defeat an opponent, but a good martial artist could feel and sense his opponent's chi and work with that uh, in order to disable him. Um, a massage therapist has a different um, objective, which is to work with the person's chi and help them to achieve a higher state of health. And when we look at what is health, we can look at an alignment of the mind, body, and spirit, and a good flow of that person's chi. So a massage therapist, as an artist, um, also then has that ability, they tune into a person and they figure out where is this person's blockages. That's what is make, that is what is such an important quality in a good massage therapist. Um, it's the difference between being like an assembly line worker where you're just going through the motions of doing something and somebody that really actually has a feel for what you do or what they do. Um, and, and you can tell the difference when you get a massage from somebody that's really tuned in to feeling life energy, to feeling chi. It's like they locate your, your tension just through sensing it. It's not through an intellectual process of, you know, oh, I can name this muscle in Latin, or I can understand this uh, physiological process because I spent five years at a massage school in Canada or three years at a medical school or... Um, you know, I have this intellectual understanding of the human body. A good massage artist actually has a feel. And that's why people um, could be fantastic healers without having the understanding of Western medicine. Um, for people for you know, hundreds, if not thousands of years in Hawaii, we're, we're, we're good kahunas, for example. Um, in many cultures, there's shamans. Um, in um, India, there's been people practicing Ayurvedic medicine for thousands of years. It's not until the British came in and then outlawed Ayurvedic hospitals um, that, that it was restricted and this, this idea of um, intellectual superiority of Western medicine came in. The same in Hawaii. 
when um, missionaries and different and, and the, the Europeans came there, they outlawed a lot of the traditional Hawaiian practices. It's actually the first state uh, in America and probably the first place in the world where they actually had to have regulations over massage. And the, and the actual um, objective of those regulations was to restrict what they called heathen methods of healing. Okay, because they were intuitive based, they were about empathy, they were about spiritual connection with the, the person. Um, and that's what I see actually going on today. A lot of this um, debate, there's a lot of um, controversy and conflict, in fact, within the world of massage, between people that want to regulate it, people that want to control it, people that want to force their ideas upon other people. Um, and it's the same in the what, what happened in the colonial attitude of when they invaded, uh, colonialists invaded different countries. They like when the British went to India, they restricted Ayurvedic medicine. When the, when the Europeans went to Hawaii, they stopped Hawaiians practicing. Uh, it's it's everywhere. It's a colonial imperialistic, um, arrogant attitude um, of disrespect toward indigenous people's beliefs. That, that it's summarized in a lot of those movies like Pocahontas and Avatar and things like that. Um, but that's that's a very important thing that's going on in the world today. It's a, it's a huge conflict that, that obviously I've been involved in, um, and um, is is at the core of some very important issues. And one of them being, what is the goal of massage? Because you have to under if you don't believe in life force, then a major goal that all traditional forms of massage have had is that manipulation of that life force and that that tuning in. So that's an important issue. Another one is empathy. Well, you know, we, if we can't um, understand ourselves and other people as, you know, quote unquote spiritual beings or um, life force beings, uh, however you want to describe it, then um, what does empathy really mean? Because uh, in my opinion, empathy means tuning in and having a respectful attitude toward the life force of another. Just like the words namaste in India means I respect your life force the life force in you, or aloha, actually, in Hawaii, is, is a greeting between the life force between two different people. Okay, so um, a lot of greetings in those cultures are actually about recognizing each other's life force. Okay, so how does a person have empathy if they don't recognize life force? If they just think they're dealing with a hunk of matter, that there is no person there, that there's no distinction between a living body and a dead body, how, how do they have empathy? Okay, so that's another question that I think is, is, is very important if you don't recognize um, uh, the life force and, and the massage is an art form. Because empathy is something that you can't um, just grade in a school. So a lot of North America in particular seems to be obsessed by regulating massage training and doing things like, oh, let's do 500 hours, let's do 1,000 hours, let's do 3,000 hours of training. But you can't actually assess a person on the basis of empathy in, 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 a, in an exam. Okay, you can ask certain questions and that thing, that sort of thing, but, but it's not something that can be tested. Therefore, um, a lot of schools don't emphasize it. And, and I'm not saying all don't, because there's certainly a lot of good teachers in schools that do. And most people sensibly understand empathy. And there's a lot of teachers... Um, and I've had this comment, a lot of people, oh, I, I, my, the school I went to wasn't that good or anything, but I had a great teacher who taught me uh, extra stuff outside because they had some training in kahuna, or they had some training like in, uh, as a kahuna, or as in lomi lomi, or, or in some other form, shiatsu, or that sort of thing. So I'm not saying that everybody that works at those institutions um, doesn't convey that understanding to their students. But what I'm saying is that a lot of, when, when people regulate the massage industry, um, they're regulating it in terms of, um, you know, science, so naming um, body parts in Latin is a very important part, um, and also doing te certain techniques, so it's all about techniques, um, which becomes like a rote learning type of institution, like a, a factory um, approach to, um, to massage instead of an art form, okay? And I think that's a really important concept um, because I also think teaching is an art form. Um, because teaching also is the is an important um, thing when it comes obviously to a massage school, for example, a, a good teacher should be able to enthuse um, his students or her students with with a um, with a passion 
for what they're doing. Um, it's um, an ability to communicate where you touch the person's soul um, and you convey the spirit of what you're trying to do. And so that's also an art form. So again, I don't really believe that governments should be involved in regulating massage or massage education because it's restrictive on people's creativity, it's restrictive on innovation. All right. So I'm glad I live in at least, um, you know, here in Australia, we don't have that, although there's movements towards it. There's certainly a lot of, and I'll talk about that later on, with the government regulation of massage in Australia is such a ludicrous, or the government regulation of massage training, it's, it's, it's not even, it's not enforced as such. It's not strict, but it's a stupid concept. Um, and the whole, I can talk a lot about that. Um, but yeah, massage as an art form is so important because it really does depend on your ability to feel. You need to, you know, and tune into a person, okay? As well as even bringing energy from your heart into your hands, okay? So a lot of people, there's like a connection with us. So when we touch a person, we can convey good intent. We can convey a loving intent, a caring intent. Um, which is like bringing the spirit of aloha in Hawaiian massage into our massage. So that's an art form. It's, it's also, um, in many cases, it's a spiritual art form because it requires a certain form of spiritual development in yourself, um, your ability to open up your heart chakra in Ayurvedic uh, medicine as well and have your other chakras open as well. So there's, there's a whole idea there. Um, which is ancient, going back thousands and thousands of years in Ayurvedic medical history of the chakra system and the Shashumna, the central energy channel that links our crown chakra to our base chakra and opening those up. And again, those aren't just concepts. They, they, uh, I mean, they are concepts in one sense, but they are ways to describe life force and its movement through the body. Okay? I personally, being a Westerner, now, I've studied Ayurvedic medicine. I've had a lot of Thai massage. I've done a course in Thai massage. I've studied Chinese herbal medicine. Um, I've done a diploma in um, Shiatsu and Oriental Functional Medicine from Japan. So, and I've lived in Hawaii and had a lot of experience with Hawaiian massage. So my personal experience has been on a multicultural basis. So what I do is I actually um, take the concepts behind these great and historical and culturally important forms of massage, and I... I take the essence of that, which is to feel what you're doing. An Ayurvedic doctor once said to me, um, when they do cooking, they don't measure out every spice. They actually have a feel of it. So even when they're doing Ayurvedic cooking, which is actually a very important part of Ayurvedic medicine, because um, you know, 90, well, 70 to 90 percent of diseases come from um, nutrition, and another 70 percent come from stress, and obviously there's a, a crossover there. Um, but when an Ayurvedic doctor does that, they actually they do it through feeling. So a lot of um, healing arts are done that way. And that's the important thing here, is that massage is a healing art. It shouldn't be. It's not a science. It's a healing art. And every artist is different. Um, some artists, and some people are going to like one artist better than another artist. Um, some people are going to like one person's feel for massage better than another person. Some people are going to be able to um, convey more love, more aloha, when they massage people. Uh, other people aren't. And so, so the free market should dominate the massage industry and it should dominate the massage training industry because the same thing. Some people are going to want to learn from one person about massage. So this whole thing in North America about over-regulation of the massage industry, I completely oppose. Completely. It, it, it's stifling on the art, artistic side of it. Um, so, yeah, that's, that's pretty much what I wanted to talk about in terms of ma massage as an art form, but it, it's a huge subject, but it's like a, a fundamental basis of what makes a good massage therapist, in my opinion. It's not just about knowing techniques. You can apply a whole bunch of techniques to a dead body. That doesn't, that doesn't do anything. It's, the techniques are subordinate to your connection with that person, your feeling for the flow of their life force, because... Techniques to me are like having tools in a toolbox. You can't build a house a, a car, just having tools in your toolbox and randomly putting them there. You have to have the feel and the big plan for what you're doing. Now, that's not a perfect analogy, but, you know, because our diagnostic skills, being a good massage therapist, they're not just Western diagnosis, like, oh, this person has this condition, that person, that condition in Latin. They're about 
feeling, oh, where is the blockage in the flow of qi? And this is why so many people, oh, they write these skeptical comments and, oh, this is pseudoscience. What the hell is pseudoscience? Pseudoscience? It's just a stupid derogatory word that these people come up with because they're like a basically a religious fanatic, except that they're scientific fanatics. But, but, but they're not even scientific, they're egomaniacs that um, want to, they're materialistic egomaniacs is what I would call them. Instead of being humble and just going, well, science only recognizes some things. We know certain things, we don't know certain other things. That's a humble scientist. But people who get on their high horse and start criticizing what other people know, thinking that, oh, because I can't see life force, it doesn't exist. Or because I can't feel life force, it doesn't exist, and you couldn't feel it, you couldn't sense it, because, who, you know, who do they think they are? That's my question. These people, I, sorry, I get really annoyed with them. I'm a passionate person, and this is a passionate subject. So, I mean, my, my life passion is to help people with good massage. So, um, yeah, I do get upset about these things. But uh, anyway, I'm also a very happy person. Um, so that's enough for today, and uh, I'll talk about more things in our next talk. Thank you.